Shalom and good morning to you all. We continue the book of Isaiah, chapters 5 to 9. Very important today. I've added some other things to do with the New Testament. So I've titled it, um, And the New Testament Root of Salvation. Reading from verse 1 of chapter 5, the vineyard of Yahweh destroyed. Now I will sing to my be well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with a choice choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. Verse 7. For the vineyard of Yahweh of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness. Sorry, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. If you read all of it, especially God is saying, doing a parable of how well he treated Israel and did good things to them, and he expected them to be good people, i.e. bring forth good grapes, and they brought forth sinful people, wild grapes. Now, all the teachings of the New Testament come from the Old. I have a list called Nothing New in the New Testament, showing the Old Testament reference for each teaching or each New Testament teaching. If you want that list, um, contact me. Here we have an example when comparing the above to about a vineyard and um, the parable of the vineyard. In Mark chapters 12 verses 1 to 9, Luke chapters 20 verses 9 to 16, Matthew chapter 21 verses 33 to 41. The point, thoroughly know your Old Testament and that God's laws apply to the whole human race and you would better understand the New Testament and practice things of the old, except for the animal sacrifices. Do not think that God has, however, replaced Israel, because from where he talks about them, and that Christians are now the new Israelites, or replace um, God's people. Romans 11.1, 1, Paul speaking, I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid, for I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Verse 11-18 Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root bearest thee. So God does not cast away his people or change Israel. Continuing from verse 13 Woe to the wicked! Therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge, and their honourable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell have enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Verse 24. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of Yahweh, the God of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Verse 25. Therefore is the anger of Yahweh kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is outstretched still. If Israel, God's son, was severely punished for not keeping his laws, does it make sense he would not punish Gentiles, the unholy, the, unholy, the unholy others? Christians are making the same error Israel did. Woe unto them that call evil good 
and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe well, unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. In other words, instead of Christians trying to learn from the Jews who got oracles of God and adding their faith of the Messiah to the keeping of God's commandments, as the apostles and the early church did, and also the Messianic Jews of today do, the Christians of today follow a Jesus, who they say has taken away the commandments, and then try and teach the Jews to follow such a Jesus. Fulfilling verses 20 to 21, rather than the Jews being the light to the Gentiles, as it says in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 6, Isaiah 49 verse 6, Isaiah 60 verse 3, Luke chapters 2, 32, Acts chapters 13, 47, and Acts chapters 26, verse 6. And as I've said before, I think it's in Acts chapter 7, 35 or thereabouts. Actually, it's Acts chapter 7, 38, which reads, This is he that was in the church in the wilderness, the angels which spake to him in a Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So Christians today are supposed to be following the oracles that was passed on to them from the church in the wilderness, through the apostles, and on to believers or seekers today. When we studied the books of Kings and Chronicles, we saw Israel, commonly called the Twelve Tribes, go into slavery and suffered many of the curses of Deuteronomy 28. In verse 25 above, we see some of these curses also befalling Judah for the same disobedient reason. The carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. So note the curse of Deuteronomy 28 happened in biblical times, not to a black population the last 400 years. We shall see more of these curses later on. That is reading events into the Bible rather than noting when they actually occurred in our Bible. If you do not know, we shall also read of Judah going into slavery to Babylon. The books of the prophets record the part that they, the prophets, played in those historical events of books of Kings and Chronicles. Moving on to chapter 6, Isaiah's vision of the Lord. Verse 1. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood, above it stood the seraphims. Thims. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And so on. So here we see that angels have six wings not two. Compare with Revelation chapters 4, verses 2 and verse 8. Continuing from verse chapter 6, verse 8, Isaiah's commission from Yahweh. Also I heard the voice of Yahweh saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear you indeed, but understand not, and see you indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Healing comes from understanding the need to obey the commandments, and keeping them. Inclusive of Exodus chapter 27, verse, sorry, Exodus chapter 24, verse 7, and Leviticus chapter 23. Verse 10 above was quoted by Yeshua in Matthew chapter 13, verse 14, Mark 4, verse 12, Luke 8, verse 10, John 12, verse 40, Acts 28, verses 23 to 26, and Acts 28, verses 23. To whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. Acts 28 verse 24, 
and some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And we shall add more to this point later on about what is the testimony and the teachings of the apostles. Chapter 7, verse 1. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, the king of Judah, that Rezim, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramelia, king of Israel, went up towards Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, and his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said Yahweh unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Sheer and Sheer Jeshub, the son of and Sheer Jeshub thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto him, Take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint hearted. For the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezim with Syria, and of the son of Ramelia. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramelia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabil. Thus saith Yahweh God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezim. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramelia's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Continuing from verse 13, the sign of Emmanuel, or Yeshua. And he said, Hear you now, O house of David. Verse 14. Therefore Yahweh himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Verse 15. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose good. Remember Romans chapter 7 verse 12, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So that is what Yeshua will be following to refuse evil. Continuing from verse 16, for before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land shall thou abhorrest, shall be forsaken of both her kings. Now in reference to what we read in these verses, see Matthew chapters 1 verse 23 and Luke chapters 1, verses 31 and 34. The events of chapter 7 happened about 734 years before Christ was born, giving credibility to the Bible over other religious books, as it predicts future world events. Moving on to chapter 8, I'm going to start at verse 13. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, let him be your fear, let him be your dread, and he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offence, to both the house of Israel, for a jinn and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. So this is talking about the Messiah coming and how some of the Jews in the New Testament will not believe. And this, they come onto these stories that Yeshua said, break down this temple now, build it back up and, and so forth. And whoever falls in this stone, it, um, stone, stone being him, whoever don't believe in him, will have problems. Now Isaiah's child's name in chapters 1 to 4 means the spoil hastens, the prey speeds and is a warning to the coming destruction of Damascus and Samaria. Isaiah's other son's name in 7, 3, 7 chapter 3 means a remnant will return. See also Isaiah chapters 10 verse 20-22. But also extends to their return from Babylon, 
as we read in Ezekiel chapters 20, or we will read in Ezekiel chapters 24, verses 15 to 24. And I said some other New Testament verses that, that collaborates these prophets, prophecies is Matthew chapters 21, verse 44, Luke chapters 2, verse 34, 20, verse 18, Romans 9, verses 32 to 33, and 11, verses 25. So, the stone I'm talking about is mentioned in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 8. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offence, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So, that verse of Peter is talking about the descendants or the children, citizens of Israel, who left Egypt. That's the subject matter of Peter. In fact, if you start to read in the beginning of Peter, verse chapter chapter 1, verse 1, it says to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, and so on in, 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 in Asia. So, to understand in New Testament, Peter's writings, for example, you have to understand these prophecies, such as what we read in, in Isaiah. Continuing from chapters 8, verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? For the living to the dead, Isaiah 20, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So today we have people going to palm readers and other prophets, so-called prophets, and what the Bible is saying is, do not go to people who are going to contact the dead, that's number one. And if the people who you're going to, for guidance, are not speaking according to the law and the testimonies, do not listen to them, because there's no light in them. So, what is light? Who has it? What is the testimony? And who has it? Remember, we read to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. And it's not, definitely not a person called Ellen G. White. So, remember Proverbs chapter 6.23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light. Psalm 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. Psalm 119, verse 151. O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. He that saith I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. John 3, 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So to answer the first part of the question... What is light and who has it? The law and the commandments are truth, and those who keep them have a light. Those who do not are liars and should not teach. A few verses to answer the second part of the question. What is a testimony and who has it? Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Hebrews 9.15 For this cause he is a mediator of the New Testament that by, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament they, that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Notice it says those who are called are not saved. Luke 24.45 then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 16 For we have not followed cunning device of fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Yeshua but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 
But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 And a dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yeshua. And Revelation 14 12 Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yeshua, who some of you call Jesus Christ. So in short, the testimony is the faith of Yeshua the Messiah. Prior to his death and resurrection, salvation was through God's prescribed animal sacrifice system. The humans corrupted that system and its temple. God kept the same system but replaced the temple. 1 John chapter 2.21 but he spake of the temple of his body. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own? The sacrifice is, as you read in these other verses, Hebrews 9.26. He appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 10.12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Hebrews 13.15 By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifices of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So the law and testimonies is the commandment, commandments of God and the faith in Yeshua. The prophets prophesied of this new way to come, i.e. in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Yeshua proclaimed himself as the New Testament in Matthew 26 verse 28. And the apostles were able to give eyewitness testimonies of the new testimony. We are called to believe in, the, in their testimony and to add to it our faith in it as our testimony. So that on our judgment day, we, like our predecessors, will also have the commandments of God and a testimony in God's forgiveness system for our sins. Remember earlier I mentioned 1 Corinthians 14.32 And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. And 1 John 4 verse 1 Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. He that, 1 John 2 verse 4 He that saith I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 1 John 5 2 By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So anyone claiming to be a prophet or a preacher of God, and teaches not to keep the correct holy days of God, are speaking lies. The spirit guiding them does not line up with the spirit that guided the Bible prophets, so neither with their testimony and teachings. See also um, chapters 9 verse 15 below. Going on to Isaiah chapter 9 and starting from verse 6, for a child, for to us a child is born. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. On, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. For associated um, New Testament verses, see Luke chapters 1 verse 32, chapters 2 verse 11, 1 John chapters 3 16, Matthew 28 verse 18, 1 Corinthians I think it's either chapters 15 or 16, but verse 25, and Ephesians 2, 14. 
Continuing from Isaiah chapters 9 verse 11. Therefore Yahweh shall set up the adversaries of Rezim against him and join his enemies together. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind. And they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is outstretched still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek Yahweh, the God of hosts. Therefore Yahweh will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush, in one day. Verse 15. The ancient and honourable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Verse 17. Therefore Yahweh shall have no mercy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all of this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is outstretched still. For wickedness burneth as the fire. And verse 19. And the people shall be as a fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother, and he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry. And he shall eat on his left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. And verse 21. For all of this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is outstretched still. So we started off with God talking about the vineyard, how he tended it and treated it nicely, and we end up with um, his anger with them and what he's doing to them. But yet, he is still merciful and is out stretching his hand for them to return to him and get his blessings. So we've read some of the curses that fell on these people, verses 17 to 21. Way before the 14th century black slavery that people keep promoting as part of the curses, Note, no matter how foolish Israel was, all it took was for them to repent and return to keeping God's commandments. His hand is still outstretched out towards us, not to perish through lack of knowledge or false traditional inherited teachings, but repent and return to full obedience. Lack of knowledge includes being deceived and ignorance. As it says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And we see that knowledge is lack of his ways and keeping his ways. Luke chapter 13 verse 5, Yeshua speaking, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall likewise perish. So, look at all the instructions of God, that God gave to be kept. For example, as I keep saying, Leviticus 23. And if there are any you are not keeping, I suggest you repent and return to keeping them. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Shalom. Until tomorrow, God willing.